Is the Rocket League ranked system broken? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes, but there's something you can do about it. Today, I'm gonna break down what Psyonix has been doing to the rank system and why it feels so hard for the average guy like you and me to gain rank in 2024. Plus, later on, I'm gonna be consulting some pros, SSLs, and pro coaches to design a plan for me to rank up in 2024 that I'm gonna publish for you here and you can steal if you want. But first, let's look at the data and understand what's happening right now in ranked. Currently, we're in season 13 of the ranked ladder. Generally, all Rocket League seasons have a duration of three to four months on average. You see, because Rocket League does what's called a soft reset every season, ranking up at the start of the season is three times as hard as ranking up at the end of a Rocket League season. At the end of every season, Rocket League resets your rank, which almost always means they reduce it. For example, the pro player Com with over 300k tournament winnings that I interviewed three weeks ago, he loses about 800 MMR every season. So for example, if Com was champ one, that means he would get reset to around gold two. That's how hard pros are getting reset. Now for players like me, we get reset anywhere from one to two ranks. So I'll drop anywhere from GC2, GC3 to champ three, GC1. And last, but definitely not least, you probably go down one to two rank brackets. So for example, diamond two to diamond one or diamond two to plat three. That's what a soft reset means and how it normally works most seasons. However, there's something that Rocket League has been doing lately the last three seasons that's making ranked harder than usual. And you should know if you're going to try to rank up. I want to show you some graphs here from the Rocket League Reddit. Here, Psyonix releases ranked distributions a couple months following each season typically. In this graph here, we can see the change since season 12, where Reddit user broke down the percentage change in every rank from season 10 to season 11, as far as I'm aware. If we look at the doubles ladder here, bottom to top, you'll see that in that season, Rocket League dropped the amount of SSLs by 50%. This trend continues all the way down the rank. So you'll see there's 40% less GC3s, 33% less GC2s, 35% less GC1s, which is a little weird. It just went up. But for most ranks, it goes down until Platinum 2 to Platinum 1. In other words, all ranks Platinum 2 through SSL were made harder. Ranks below Platinum 1 down to Bronze 1 were made easier. And you can see this because the amount of Bronze 1s in doubles went up 150% since Season 10. In fact, this is even happening to Musty, who for multiple seasons was an SSL, but who I interviewed recently to ask how much rank he lost. Here's what he said. Objectively, what's happened to you last season of this season in ranked? I'm, I'm like same skill level, but lower rank. The lobbies in Grand Champ 2 are the same as low SSL lobbies from like four or five seasons ago. It's the, like, it is the same. Here's the point. Objectively, it is harder to rank up today than it was six to 12 months ago. So what does this mean for you and me? It means if we want to rank up today, we have to move faster than ever before. Not only do we have to outrun the average player, but we have to outrun Epic Games' Banhammer, whacking us down two to three ranks at the end of every season. But now I want you to actually see what ranked looks like and experience with me why it's so hard. For context, I'm a peak GC3, but today I'm going to be going into ranked with three different coaches to show you what top Rocket League looks like. I'm going to be playing with Seabass, who is a peak RLCS pro player. I'll be playing with Coach Curtis, who is a peak SSL pro coach. And I'll be playing with Sir Puff, who is a peak Grand Champ 2 coach. Ranked players, if you're looking for free coaching, I've got something for you. As many of you know, my flagship coaching program, the Grand Champ Bootcamp, it's expensive. It's 18 plus, And the truth is, it's not the best fit for 99% of players. That's why I'm super excited to announce today, I'm releasing a free version of the Grand Champ Bootcamp. Now, this is not the full coaching program, but my team and I have spent the last month putting together a free version of the program that all of you can access the day this goes live. The free version goes live tonight with training videos, free packs, plugins, resources, and a private community you get when you join that you guessed it is all free. Click the first link in the description below to join the free school community. Plus, if you join in the next seven days, I'm doing a private live stream plus Q&A as a thank you for anybody that joins in the alpha release this week. Completely free and you can leave whenever you want. <laughs> so click the first link below and I'll see you there. Okay, so I remember these games with Curtis. The hardest thing for me, not hitting the jump button. It's like, you'll see me. I just keep flipping the ball away. Like, boom, I pass it to Ben, bump Curtis, and then I'm trying to squishy save. I'm just doing what my team is already doing. 
Yeah. I'm pumped. I'm stunned. Work so bad. I do it again. I flip the ball to Manny. Like, I just need to keep it close, but I think they're so good that I'm just on the defensive, just jumping. I'm not going to get any power on it. I'll play fully. Yeah. He's got you it. jump early. Yeah. Curtis literally is playing the game for himself and me. He's telling me what not to do, and I'm still doing it. I got yeah, it. Yeah, what should Oh, yeah, you're right. Good call. <laughs> People in the comments, I don't want to hear it. What would you do if you were put in an SSL lobby, okay? You would look like this, or worse. Oh, I, I fake jump. I'm done. Oh, that's fine. He might, he might. Oh! Yeah. I don't know how I jump so far away. That's bad. No. Come on. No. All right, so we'll wrap up the Curtis games. Uh, spoiler, we went 0 and 3. But now that I was warmed up, getting into the Seabass games, things might go a little better. Yeah, there you go. At least in the Seabass games, I wasn't just spam jumping. And I actually do something. I get a redirect. Down to you. Get that touch. Oh, come on. Get it, get it, get it, get it. I got it, boys. <laughs> I'm just the one GC1 that should be SSL. That... <laughs> You know, we don't need oh, to play no. any games after this. Oh yeah, no, for sure. Never mind. I'm stuck in your man. I have no clue, but I can clear it for this one. That's good. This goes to it. I got him. You? Shoot it! Oh, oh my god, way. I have no power. Is it in? Just get in, yes. just get in, get in. Yes! <laughs> Is there really anything to analyze? So you see, we actually take one game, and we'll see if we can take two. This was uh, game three. We rematched Tay Second Angel. You got it. No! No, 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 that's fine. Get home, Seabass. I'll fall. You! Shoot it! Get in! Yes. Far down! No! Get it! <laughs> I got it, I got it. I think I broke a rule one. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to. I was so I was so overwhelmed by what was happening. Oh, I dance in. <laughs> oh. So we go even. We're 1-1 one, one right now with Seabass going into the final game, game three. Oh, he stayed close. See, like, here. Good try. I'll watch that. That's a good oh, shot. Oh, my bad. Corners there. Thank you. So kind. Down. Even get yeah. even a player like me. Wow. I don't know he'd be able to dunk there. That's that's their plan right now. <laughs> and why me? Yep. <laughs> I keep speed flipping into it. That's <laughs> That's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm quite amazed. Thank you for throwing 10 rank for the people at home watching. Who would have thought I can't hang in SSL lobbies? But in other news, I want to make this productive and actually talk with each of the coaches about what I was doing wrong. These are things that you might be able to steal and fix before you get stuck in your bad habits, like unfortunately me. So to kick off the coach roasting sessions, let's start with the highest ranked games and the games where I got beat up the most, Seabass. One of the biggest things I noticed is what it means to actually keep pressure. If I were to ask you, what does pressure mean in life? League, how would you answer that? I would probably use words like boost advantage. Talk about who is possession. Uh, that's kind of where I would stop. One of the biggest misconceptions in pressure, you can still pressure someone even when the opponent has the ball and they're on your side. He goes up, you force yourself to go up because you feel like if you don't, something bad is gonna happen. He's already watching you and he's already going because he's thinking that you're going. By you just placing your car there without having to go, would have already made him do something with the ball. It's sort of like a really advanced version of just because you can go for the ball doesn't mean you should. Sometimes mm -hmm. the best thing for you to do is just be there force the touch and then get back for the next play here's another thing a big thing about twos especially is being a little too aggressive the biggest caveat to that this is still a scary position because if they do escape you like he does and i don't get the best touch he can take the ball from me and go ahead and get a free goal off of it you think it's not bad to demo in 2v1s but mm -hmm. this situation there's too much time for this play to develop it's not a good play it's better for me to be middle yep. here takeaways from the coaching with seabass the first one was just because you can jump for a ball doesn't mean you should. Sometimes simply occupying space on the pitch is enough to apply pressure and do your job. Seabass also taught me, yes, demos are important, but it's important to know why and when they work. The takeaway lesson that Seabass taught me is when thinking about demos, you want to look at the speed of the play as well as the location 
on the field. Overcommitting for demos is more dangerous when it's on your side of the field and you're getting pressured. So only go when you have a clear advantage, the pace of play is high and it's near the opponent's net. Next, I wanna show you the coaching I had with Puff and what he taught me about winning at the lower ranks. So this is a really, really important concept that isn't talked about a whole lot, but it's called playing wide. So what playing wide is you're taking wider approaches to the ball to get better touches from the play that's going to happen, right? You see how close that gets us to the play? We need to have space between us and the play in order to really do anything with this. But you see how we have to get momentum by kind of using all of our boost here because we aerial from zero momentum, right? So we can't actually generate a whole lot of forward momentum without using a whole bunch of boost. So we're here and we immediately flip into this play, which we want to speed up a little bit, right? We don't need to necessarily put ourselves all the way to where our teammate is at because we don't want to be in the same spot as our teammate. By flipping here and picking up so much speed, we now have to play close and we feel like we're too close. So we start to turn away from the play and we cover only one option, which is our midfield option. And now that the ball goes out towards the corner, we have to try and shoot the ball on the net going away from the net. Yeah, that makes sense. I did not think it was even possible for this ball to go in the corner. The way I saw your car, I thought this goes center or it goes across. That does make sense. Like I wasn't ready for it, clearly. If we just take a little bit of time and let the play kind of develop, we can one, open up that shooting lane and, and kind of make that shot. My biggest note from my coaching with Puff was to play wider. In other words, keep distance from the play. So like Puff said, what I'm going to start doing is positioning wider, waiting back further. That way I can give a driving start to any play. And I'm not stuck in these awkward situations where I have to use 80 boost to bail myself out all the time. Finally, my favorite coaching session where I pretty much just got roasted the whole time. Curtis. <laughs> Here, I mean, do I need to tell you that I'm jump up ball? If you just calm down and understand that, hey, who has ball control? You do, not them. You simply demand respect. Um, here, why shoot it? Why go towards the net? We have no boost, we bring the ball to the books. Flip or shot from midfield will never go in on two people. I, I take ball and I always go at net. And I'm doing dribbles and I'm going at net and sometimes they're okay. But like, I remember that situation where I had like 10 boost and they're both back covering their net. Yeah. Like I can use that as a chance to go get half boost and set up more play. There is no rush towards the net. I'd rather see you take five shots at 80% chance of scoring than 20 at 10% chance. Maybe. Here, once again, you're going nowhere. You're just not going anywhere where you need to be. Let's say I have bad 50. Look how you're facing. If it goes out behind you, how are you gonna tackle this ball? You're not gonna. If the same scenario happens but you're wider, all of these angles are where? In front of you. No matter where this ball goes or what happens, even if it goes high or I get out taken, it's always gonna stay in front of you. Shout out Curtis for the uh, free spook look roast. Not that I needed that. Two final lessons from Curtis. Number one, if I'm stuck on low boost attacking, it's better to control the ball and keep possession than take a weak shot. I think a lot of the times I shoot just to shoot, but the truth is a bad shot against a good player is just handing over the ball. Number two, just like Puff, Curtis told me to play wider. Rather than position right under the 50-50, I need to keep space from the play. That way I can cover more options and be ready if a 50-50 doesn't go perfect according to plan. So conclusion, is it harder to rank up today than it was a few months ago? Yes, we're not all just going crazy, or at least I hope it's not just me. But does that mean it's impossible to rank up? No, it just means that the average guy is going to have to put a greater focus on our bad habits, and we're not going to be able to get away with some of the things that might might have worked a couple seasons ago. One thing you may notice, if you look at the line between Spook Luke subscribers and the line between how hard it is to rank up, I'm not saying I'm the reason people are better at Rocket League now. I, you know what? I'm sorry. I've created a world in which the people who watch the content on this channel are better. And so the only way to keep up is to continue to watch the content on my channel. Actually, am I a genius? Did I just create a job for myself? As long as Rocket League is around, people want to rank up. As long as people want to rank up, they watch Spook Luke videos. As long as they watch Spook Luke videos, Spook Luke needs to make videos to help people rank up. Otherwise, see what I mean? Wow. So the conclusion is, uh, subscribe to the channel. <laughs>